first, I want to say thank you to Chairman Grassley, uh, who's in an odd position on the dais today, uh, for inviting a rookie uh, to do this. I hope I don't make mistakes while you're still present. We'll do it after you leave. Um, these confirmation hearings are special occasions because they're opportunities to celebrate some of the best parts of American civics. They're opportunities to teach our kids about the meaning of America, about the Constitution, and about the differences and limits of what judges versus legislators are called to do in our respective callings. We are well served to regularly remind ourselves and our constituents that in the United States there are no Republican judges, there are no Democratic judges on our federal courts. If self-government means anything, it means that the people who write the laws, those of us who sit up here and currently at the front table for introductions, uh, the people that write the laws can be voted out of office, we can be fired by the voters. That's why the Constitution puts the Congress in charge of writing the laws. <clears throat> My colleagues and I here in the Article I branch of government are lawmakers, we are not judges, and thus we can be fired. At the same time, if the rule of law means anything, it means that the courts who decide cases must be dispassionate and impartial. Two things matter, the law and the facts. When someone comes before a court, their gender, their skin, their faith, and their personal political views are not to matter. In the same way, the judge who wears a black robe to cloak their preferences is not to have their gender, their skin, their faith, or their personal political views affect the outcome of that case either. A good judge is not a Republican, and a good judge is not a Democrat. A good judge is faithful to their oath, to the Constitution, and to the law, mindful of the facts, and committed to independence. I hope, for the sake of public trust and for our civic health, that all of us on this panel, on both sides, can agree, and to that end, I would like to begin my comments on Steve Graz in the spirit of bipartisanship uh, with the words of President Obama's U.S. Attorney for Nebraska, Deborah Gilg. Uh, Attorney Gilg said, quote, Steve has always enjoyed a reputation for honesty, for impeccable integrity, and for dedication to the rule of law, she wrote in a letter to this committee. Steve possesses, quote, an even temperament well suited for the bench, and he always acts with respect to all who interact with him, close quote. In my experience with Steve, that's exactly right. Steve is a Nebraskan through and through. He's a fifth generation Nebraskan, and like a lot of Nebraska kids, he grew up on a family farm, walking beans, raising sheep and pigs, branding cattle. The family farm in the Nebraska Panhandle taught him hard work and honesty, and the University of Nebraska then taught him the law. He earned his undergraduate degree at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, and when he was a sophomore, he shared an umbrella with a lovely young woman at a Nebraska-Auburn football game. We won big, by the way. Uh, Verlin is here with Steve today, as are your four kids. We want to say welcome to the two of you. They've been married for 32 years. Steve stayed at Nebraska for law school, graduated at the top of his class, and was the executive editor of the Law Review at Nebraska. He went on to work for Nebraskans for decades, serving as Chief Deputy Attorney General for more than a decade. He litigated multiple cases in front of the U.S. Supreme Court, the Eighth Circuit Court of Appeals, for which he's being nominated, and the Nebraska Supreme Court. And whenever he was called on to argue on behalf of Nebraskans, Steve did so with integrity, humility, and decency. Steve bleeds Husker red, but he knows that a judge must cloak all such preferences in those black robes of impartiality. We'll talk about LSU later, Cassidy. Uh, if Steve wanted to advance a policy agenda, I'm confident he would have run for office, but he did not choose that calling. He's here instead because he's committed to an independent judiciary where fair and honest judges rule on facts and on laws. He's here because he's committed to an Article III branch that considers each case under law, not under what the judge wishes the law were. That's why we're here, that's why Steve's here, and although we have different duties, one to legislate or confirm or advise and consent, and one to judge. We have the same responsibilities to uphold the Constitution. I believe that Steve is ready to do that job, and I hope that all of us on this committee today are ready to do ours and keep our questioning on the topics at hand. And with that, I recognize Senator Whitehouse. <laughs> 